Hey, what's up everyone? On this episode, we're taking a look at the tank from the top to bottom. So I've received a lot of messages recently about uh, the tank, if I could do one from basically the lights to the sump. So I did do one in the past, but this is more of an updated version. So let's go to the tank and check out what makes up my system from lights to sump. Okay, to start the tour is uh, from the very top of the tank. These are the Ocean Revives Arctic T247s. Um, they're really a good working LED. Uh, I just, they've been above my tank for a little while now. I'd say about six months to, um, to put a, a time frame on it. I do have a video on the review on these, which I'll also link below, um, along with the other links for any other video concerning the tank that you may uh, want to take a look at. <clears throat> as far as my opinion on these LEDs, they are very, very good. The spectrum is really great. They grow all the corals from the SPS and LPS and what have you in, that are that's in my tank. The tank itself is a 90 gallon Reef Ready tank. Uh, I personally, as anyone who's been subscribed to the channel for a while know, I do not like the corner overflow in these. I would have much, uh, if I had the choice to do my own system, it would definitely be a ghost overflow in the system so this way I can utilize as much of the acreage and, and sand bed space that I could. Uh, other than that, the tank itself is com is a mixed reef. There is all kinds of SPS and LPS and a few softies mixed in. Check out one of the reef updates uh, and you can uh, see more about the livestock. One of the wave makers I have is the JBO. Uh, this is the PP4, it's the older model. Uh, this has been working in my tank again. This is one of my older ones, about three years. So. Uh, I have no complaints about the, how this has worked in my tank. Here is the controller for the J-Bow powerhead and I have it mounted to this piece of plastic that I had and um, it allows for ease of basically controlling the powerhead from this side of the tank. When I'm ready for feed mode I just hold it down and it goes into feed mode for a set period of time. On the other side I have an MP10 that I wanted last year's uh, frag swap in Williamsport PA and this has been going strong. The only thing I don't really care for about the pump itself is one, it does have some noise to it. As you can hear there. And also that you can't adjust like you can adjust the other power heads by up and down and side to side. So, but as far as the pump itself, I do love it. So here is my Vortex controller and you can see I just have it laying out here but also I don't have the quiet drive I will be checking into that um, down the road but for right now it does its job really really well so now here it is this is the sump and it's basically the workhorse of my system it's what keeps everything going uh, and thriving the way it is it was designed by me and Billy Pipes, and it was built by Billy Pipes. I will leave a, a link down in the description down below in case you want to get in touch with Billy and uh, get one made just like this one. The thing that I liked about it is the hands-on that I had um, in designing it, and anything I wanted as far as you know the baffles where they where they are how many there are and how much water volume I wanted in the sump was all um, taken care of and is totally custom so if you want one the way you want it then drop Billy a line and talk it over with him and get one made for yourself in the first compartment is my protein skimmer now this is the SCA 302 protein skimmer made by SC Aquariums. It has been in service in my tank for probably around five 
or yeah, about a better part of five years now. It's been running 24 seven for the majority of that time and has never given me one bit of headache. Uh, just recently, the pump portion of the protein skimmer has been acting a little, you know, temperamental. So the quick fix to that is basically buy a backup uh, pump for it and uh, get ready for, you know, just to swap them out. So the protein skimmer itself is rated for a 180 gallon tank and it comes with a larger collection cup than what I originally got when I first purchased it. Um, which basically doubled the size. It also comes with a silencer that does what it says it should do. And now this protein skimmer runs virtually silent. Uh, you don't hear it at all. And what I'll do actually is uh, let's go in a little closer and I'll actually sh let you hear the difference between uh, a protein skimmer without the silencer and a protein skimmer with the silencer. So as you can see right there, that's where the silencer sits. I'll move the protein skimmer actually so you can get a better look at it. And uh, now I'll just remove the hose that sits down on the bottom. And let's bring you in so you can hear it, what it sounds like up close. So as you can see, that's what it sounds like with the hose off and the silencer uh, disconnected. You can hear the difference in the sound. So now let's put it back on and uh, I'll let you hear what it sounds like again. So there it is with the silencer back on. And as you can hear, virtually silent. So with that being, with, with showing you that, it has a hose that comes off from the collection cup, you could easily uh, adapt that to a external collection cup. Uh, what I do basically is I just take an old wine bottle and empty all the waste into that and then dump it down the sink. It also is, I built this little stage. Um, I have also talked to Billy about building one at a Corian, uh, but that may be a future upgrade. But right now it's doing really well with the way it is and it does collect a lot of dark, dark skim mates. So that's the protein skimmer part. Now let's go into the second section. Right here in the second section is my refugium. It houses uh, two different forms of macroalgae. Uh, I, right there in the, the lighter of the two is the bubble calerpa. Underneath is a ball of chato that has been growing and growing well. Um, it's all lit by basically just a shop drop light and a Cree LED light bulb. I'll have all the, the specifications and links to that down below as well. As well as anything that I have in my sump, I'll leave you some links so this way uh, if you want to pick one up you can. Inside this Calerpa is, um, you could just about make out uh, Right, right over here is an Aquion Pro Heater. It's the 250 watt version. Along with, I have a Finex heater. You can see the controller right there. And uh, it's mounted in the back. Both those heaters are combined. Uh, keep my tank between 77 and 78 degrees. Um, I always ran two heaters because in the event that one heater was to fail on me, I'd always have a backup. And I also keep heaters in, in stock, so this way, if that does happen, I have something to swap out for the one that went bad. In the final stage of my uh, sump, I have uh, an ATO system. This is a JBJ, as you can tell. Uh, what I do with the JBJ is it has dual uh, mechanical sensors. I like the mechanical sensors better because I feel uh, it's more control and, and if you clean them regularly, uh, they really don't give you any problem. I've had two of these systems running in the systems that I've had and never have gotten a problem with them. Uh, right here, this sensor is for my low water line. 
and as soon as the water goes below this, it'll start to fill it up. I auto top off my tank with calc washer in, in my uh, ATO water. Right back here, you can see the second of the two sensors. That's my high water line. Now what that does is, in case I lose um, my return pump, and that one shuts down and the tank begins to backwash, it'll backwash, since I said it with Billy, to right about here on the tank. So it's more than, full, it, more than capable of handling uh, the tank draining into it. But also what that does is that high water line will cut off the ATO pump and stop it from filling any water into the system. Also what that's good for is in case for whatever reason, if this was to um, stop functioning and the ATO pump was still running and it fills my tank with top off water, it'll only fill it to that line before this will tell it to shut off. I've always had a redundancy built into my systems because obviously the more you have, the better off you are from having something happen that will ruin your system and just flush it with auto top off water. Now right there you see is my return pump. What it is is a JCOD uh, DC return pump and I'll have a link for that as well in the description down below. I like the DC pumps a lot better than the uh, regular pumps in that they are more energy efficient. Also, they have an external controller and you can see that I only have the first three lights lit. So this pump is plenty powerful to, for my needs. Um, it's, the other thing I like about the, having the controller is if I want to shut this down manually, I can do that and I can put it on a feed mode. Right here is the Digital Aquatics Reef Keeper Bar. Uh, the Reef Keeper is the system that I have on my tank. I only use this basically for uh, the ease of shutting down equipment. My protein skimmer, return pump, um, refugium lights, and the auto top off are hooked up to this. But obviously, uh, looking back on, you know, my history in the hobby, if I was to choose one back when I first got this, I'd probably save the money and go with a Neptune. So basically that's it for my sump. It's a pretty basic system. Uh, you can't get much simpler than this, in my opinion, and it works really, really well. The only other thing that I have in the sump is I have a bunch of brittle stars and bristle worms. I let them live. I don't get rid of them. They take care of a lot of the detritus that's sitting in the sump and uh, besides occasionally coming in and, and maybe vacuuming it out from time to time, they are the workhorses in my system. So basically that's it for the sump. Um, it's pretty basic as I said and uh, I highly recommend that you go check out Billy and if you want one like this give him a shout. So with that said, let's go back up top. Okay, so as we swing out to a big full picture of the tank, uh, that's basically it for this update. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you're alerted to um, more videos as they come. So that's it for now. I'll see you all next time. And as always, this is Scott, and I will see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.